Hey guys, this is Terry. I wanted to uh, give you guys a quick update on what's been going on. I think on my last video I was working on the uh, uh, bed wood for my Model A pickup. Uh, I got that pretty much completed. Uh, I've done a lot of re-engineering, so to speak, as this has gone on. Uh, the only thing that I have left to do right now is figure out which one of these stainless steel poles I want to put in it. And I'm leaning towards this one because it's a little bit more hidden, more minimized. Uh, I think originally I was going to go with a piano hinge either here or here. Uh, I actually cut this one to go along here and uh, just really didn't like the way it looked. Uh, thought about notching out the stainless steel bed strip to kind of minimize the way this hinge looks in here. So. I didn't want to get into all of that crap, so what I ended up doing was changing direction and going with a more of a hidden hinge. Uh, I actually had a couple in my toolbox from uh, where I work at. They made us take our toolboxes home and furnish us with our own toolbox at work. So I had some of that stuff left in there for uh, years of like setup and uh, just test fixtures and. Uh, stuff like that so I went out there and dug around in there and found a couple of what we refer to as hidden hinges so then I was looking at maybe putting them in this side and having the door open up this way and the way this specific hinge operates that would not allow it to open anywhere far enough to do this get access to this because of uh, the stainless, the height of the stainless steel strip those here because this door, the hinge is actually designed to have this lay over all the way. So with this extra height of this strip, uh, it would have probably not even open to 90 before it started to have in, having uh, its issues. So I decided to go ahead and hinge it this way and have it so it come up like this. So anyway, that's what I ended up doing. Uh, I switched back and forth with the battery issue, and that's what this is. This is actually a mock-up battery for six volt Optima. Um, curious to see how this actually, how close this actually is to what the real one will be. Uh, I got the dimensions of it off the internet. It's, if anything, it's actually a little bit bigger uh, than what the Optima six volt battery is. And I was kind of playing around with the idea of maybe taking the bed wood out to service the batteries. Uh, and I didn't like that once I actually started putting this bed wood in because it would take quite a bit to take that bed wood out even though the business end of it is bolted around the perimeter of the bed so I built that mock-up battery which is a real sweet unit and then what I wanted to do was come in here and see what would actually have to happen to change these batteries out so with that said, what's going to happen is I went ahead and cut this area here down. Let's see if you can even see that. You can't really see that, can you? The top of that battery mount down is what I ended up doing. Uh, and then making a spacer of the width of the battery. Uh, where is it at? Right. See that spacer right there. That's what I ended up doing. That represents the thickness of the battery once it's installed. So I, then I could route and relieve everything from the bottom side to get around that. Uh, long story short, what has to happen to get those batteries in there, the drive shaft can actually stay in there. I'll take this slinger off. Let's see if I can back out of this. I'll take this slinger here off. This is what keeps grease from the U-joint from getting onto the transmission cooler. Uh, and then I can hook the batteries up in through here and then they can go in. The only thing that has to happen on the passenger side is the transmission cooler lines will probably have to come off in order to access that side. So that's what had to be done there. But I feel a lot better about knowing for sure that I can actually service uh, the batteries from underneath without taking the wood out. So with that said, come back out here come up and let you see what the actual wood ended up looking like. Uh, some of it's taped off for protection, uh, but this is what we actually got, ended up with, is this right here. Um, and that's 
the grain match. Uh, I lost the material. The amount of material that I lost was was ten hundredths of an inch because that's what I gapped it around. Was ten hundredths. Um, like I said, a majority of the business end of this is the perimeter bolts all the way around it. Uh, these bolts here are fake. The, this board, this is actually one solid board, so these here in the middle are just bolted to the wood. So both sides are the same. Uh, this strip here is actually the only two that actually probably would be considered uh, normal, do what they're supposed to do. They have a 3 8 gap in here and then they have a little plate on the bottom side that tightens up. That's what installs this board here. Uh, but yeah, on the, on the stainless steel finger poles, that two inch, that would probably be a pretty much an eyesore. So that other one that I showed you, this one here, go back over there. This one here, what I would end up doing is routing it out from the bottom side and in here, this area here. So this surface would be flush here. And then that would take the place of my tape one. And this is what this actually looks like when it's all said and done. It has a couple little buffers on there to keep everything in line. It has a little shock to open it up. And then I have access to what I need to have access to. And then it closes back down. And that's how it's going to be. And that's what you see of the hinges. If you can see that. Those are hidden hinges. And so that's kind of how that all looks. Um, this is a plate I made for this. This has this bracket here actually has to be removable because the only access to get to this bolt here is by reaching up underneath there. So that's why I had to make that removable. And it's held on with like three screws up through here. And I'll probably try to put some pictures on the end of this video so you guys can see a little bit of what was going on with all this. Uh, there's multiple clearance issues with uh, cross members and frame supports and all this stuff. Fuel lines got in the way, so there's multiple routings. If you were to take this, these boards off and look, turn them upside down, you would see that uh, uh, there's multiple routings as far as for like the fuel line. There's one going across here, two of them going across here for the fuel lines, recess the fuel lines, area for the fuel lines. Uh, it looks like a road map underneath there, but that's what had to happen to make everything, everything right with the world. So, but yeah, well, I, whatever you guys think on this, I think this is the way to go. That'll just be a little finger pull here as opposed to that and that, which I do have these ordered and they are coming. And I won't do anything with this until I get those and see what I, what I actually I like. Whatever you guys' opinion is on these, whichever one you guys like better, let me know. My opinion is with this. See what you guys see what you guys think about it. Uh, let's see what that's about it. Uh, getting ready to move the bandsaw back over to where it usually is at. Take the routers and stuff back downstairs. Uh, take my battery back downstairs. I just I had to I had to make a template or something for that because I can't buy an Optima six volt battery. They're high. They're kind of high pricey as far as cost goes. Uh, so I can't. I couldn't see justify buying that battery and then let it sit around for another year and a half, two years, however long it takes to uh, get this truck done. So that's why I uh, decided just to make up a mock-up battery. I didn't contact Optima to see if they had a setup battery or mock-up that I could use for that purpose. I just decided that I'd make it the worst case scenario with the dimensions I found off the internet uh, and go that route. And this is this is, was a tool I, I drilled a hole in here and released the pressure off this spring so I could use it for setup purposes. I have actually ordered two backup units for that so in case I ever get to a point where I have a shock that needs replaced I can just go ahead and jump in there and replace it but I think it works pretty good uh, I think it'll look good the only thing only thing that will change may change is once this shot gets past a, a certain point on the hinge it actually helps to close this door 
I may see if I can't find some kind of a cabinet, soft cabinet door uh, spring here. So when it comes down, it doesn't want to do that number. Uh, that's still probably something that'll happen. But anyhow, guys, that's where I'm at on that. Uh, thanks for watching.